Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. So today we'll take a look at the episode 3 of shell scripting series that we are doing. And uh, in this in this video, we'll talk about shell scripting interview questions. So if you are new to my channel and haven't followed the past two videos where we talked about shell scripting basics as well as intermediate level, uh, I would highly recommend you to go and watch those videos because uh, if you directly jump onto the interview questions, you might not completely understand it. So watch the basics, watch the intermediate level and then come here. And uh, in the future, we will also do a couple of videos on advanced shell scripting. But before that, I want everybody to come onto the same page and, uh, you know, people get enough time to watch my uh, first two videos and practice themselves. And then, you know, we can go to the advanced section. Okay, so without wasting any time, so today I'm here with some 20 questions and these 20 questions have gathered from various sources and from my past experiences. And trust me, these are the most commonly asked questions. So whenever you're going for a shell scripting interview, so you can definitely expect few questions from this and uh, we'll try to understand these questions as detailed as possible. So the first question, there is a reason why I put this question as the first one. So whenever you're doing a shell scripting interview, what happens is the interviewer always tries to understand what do you know about shell scripting or what is your common understanding or uh, do you use it in a day to day basis or not. So whenever somebody asks you this question, list some most commonly used shell commands. So the first thing that you have to do is be very honest and tell what are the commands that you use day to day basis. Like, you know, what are the commands people regularly use is the ls command to list the files. People use some commands like, uh, you know, the copy command, the move command, people use uh, mkdr to create directories or touch command to create files, vim, vim command to open the files, grep to filter the commands. So only talk about these commands. The reason why I'm saying is I've seen people answering uh, something like, okay, uh, on a day to day basis, I use netcat or use commands like route, uh, I use commands like trace route, but Trust me, these are the commands which you use only when you are into issues, right? Only when you want to debug something. So firstly, start with the commands and be honest and explain that. Okay, I use shell scripting for listing the files. And uh, for that, I use the ls command. Uh, usually, uh, we have to uh, find some files on a uh, Linux machine. So for that, we use the find command. And, uh, you know, you can say that we usually debug the Linux machine. So we use some uh, debugging commands like top command or SAR command, or uh, you can say that uh, we uh, look for the disk spaces. So we use the DF command. So you tell about the commands that you use regularly because most of the times all the companies uh, employees use these common commands and uh, the commands like trace root or the commands like netcat are only used when there are issues or when you have to debug machine. So say that these are the commands that I frequently use and there are some additional commands like whatever the advanced commands that you want to mention. Okay, so this is about the question number one. And then this question number two that we have is write a simple shell script to list all the process. So this is a very easy command. And uh, you know, this is something that people use day to day basis. So the purpose of asking this question is, do you really use your uh, day to day or you know, do you regularly work on a Linux machine or not? So to identify the list of processes, if you watched our previous videos, you can simply do ps hyphen ef. So ps hyphen ef will list all the processes and it will also provide information of all the processes. Like, you know, uh, there is a go process that is running on my machine. There is a zsh process that is running on my machine. There is bash process, of course, running on my machine. So these are the things. And, you know, once you explain about this command, like ps hyphen ef, they might ask you, okay, so ps hyphen ef is giving a lot of things. I just want the uh, process ID, which is like, you know, this one. So just print me the process ID. So for that, uh, in our previous videos, I explained you like, just take example of one command here or the one output here. So let's say that this is uh, one of the process that is running and this is the entire information of the process, right? So when they are asking you to only print the process ID, you need to understand that, you know, this is a line and this line has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight strings. And they are specifically asking you to print the second string or column number two. So what do we have to do? I also explained this in the previous video, but you can make sure, I mean, you can use the awk command. Awk is basically used to uh, filter the output of a specific uh, line or a specific uh, file or whatever you want to. 
so i can use awk and i can say the field separator what is the field separator in this case i mean who is what is separating a string from a string that is a white space so simply within the double quote use a space okay followed by use a dollar and uh, sorry use a single quote and uh, inside the brackets just say print what is the column that you want to print column number 2 so it will directly print you all the process ids so that's it it's a simple question and this question can be extended uh, just like what i have shown you after that write a script to print only errors from a remote log so this is again something uh, that is really important because let's say all your logs are getting stored in a uh, google storage or let's say all your logs are getting stored in an s3 bucket so you can get the entire log using the api call or you can use a how do you use uh, how do you retrieve logs or how do you retrieve any information uh, from a remote server or a remote machine in shell script using the curl command so we already discussed about the curl so using curl what you can do is you can get the entire output of the file but the thing that you have to do is instead of getting the entire output they are asking you only to print the error message so for that what you can do is like i have also shown you previously you can simply say uh, let's say i have a remote file uh, for example curl google.com so this is just an example okay so when i say curl google.com this is the output that i got now let's say they only want me to print the this specific line okay or they just want me to print href okay href hs reference okay so what i need to do is after the curl command i can simply use a pipe followed by the grep command to print the specific line that i want let's say in this case assume this is an error message line so what you can say is simply grep href and what happens is you get that file only ignore about this this part uh, this thing here okay so just ignore this one this is just the output that we are receiving but this is how you retrieve a specific line or specific set of lines from the remote machine whether it is a log file whether it is any other file this is how you retrieve it and for your example uh, if you want me to show a specific log file also i just uploaded a log file the other day uh, on to one of my git repositories you can also use this one for your practice so this is a sandbox repository that i have and uh, so this is the dummy log file that i stored so just click on this log file so here you can see a log file right so this is just a dummy log file that i just stored uh, for our students example purpose so here if you see there is info log there is tracing log and even in your real time use case this will be how i mean this is how your log file looks like so let's say i just want to print the trace logs okay so there are a lot of info log info logs but i only want to read the trace logs so instead of going through the file and reading this 100000 lines of file what i can simply do is i can say curl followed by just get the url of the file and followed by grep t r a c a because we want to get the trace file and here we have all the trace file what you can now do is you can simply copy this into a file and you can share this output to your colleagues or whoever is requesting this information now in an interview what you will say i can simply get this output using the combination of curl what are the three different commands you are using here you are using curl just go back to the command we are using the grep and also we are using the pipe so that's why we will say you can achieve this by using curl pipe and grep okay there is a significance for each and every command here so what is curl doing curl is retrieving the output or curl is getting your entire log file what is grep doing grep is only getting a section of output that you want like if you want error then it is only getting error but what is pipe doing pipe is combining this command with this command okay so let's say that there is no pipe here okay so if there is no pipe what happens is you you are getting you are getting the log file here and you are using the grep command but without pipe there is no use see what happened it sent you the entire file not just the trace and after that it said could not resolve the host grep and could not resolve the host trace that means it is not understanding the next command that you entered so the grep trace is something that it is not understanding so for the compiler to understand you have to use the pipe command and what pipe does is it will send the output of your entire first command to the second command okay that's how you retrieve only the trace level logs or if you want to just get the error you can just change it to error perfect so this is how it works we got all the error logs here so isn't it very easy so just you need to practice these commands after that write a shell script 
to print numbers divided by 3 and 5 and not 15. Okay, so for your purpose, what I have done is I have slightly complicated this question. So there are many forms of this question, like people might ask you, like an interview can ask you, interviewer can ask you, print even numbers. Okay, or they can say print odd numbers. Print numbers divisible by 3. Or people can ask you print prime number. So all of them are same category questions. Okay, don't worry. Like the only reason why I have these questions or, uh, you know, I just combine this question so that you understand everything. Like I don't want to just say uh, print even numbers or print odd numbers or print divisible by three. So instead, I just combine multiple questions and I framed a single question so that we save time some we save some time as well. So the approach is same. Let's say you have to print even numbers. What you will do, you will check if the number is divisible by two for odd numbers you will just say not divisible by two that's it right so you just need to understand the approach okay and similarly here if you try to understand the question let's break the question into multiple parts and finally we will try to put this script i mean this we'll try to put this entire thing into a shell script okay we'll write that as well so firstly what is the question so the question is divided into three parts divisible by three divisible by 5 and not divisible by 15. Okay, so there are three parts. The first part is the number has to be divisible by 3. The second part is number has to be divisible by 5. And the final part is number should not be divisible by 15. No, why did I choose this one? Then let's try to understand the question. So what is the multiple and multiple of 3 and 5? Let's say uh, you have you are given numbers from uh, 1 to 15. Okay. So what are the numbers that are divisible by 3? You have 3, you have 6, you have 9, you have 12 and you have 15. And similarly, for 5, what will be the uh, numbers? The numbers will be 5, 10 and 15. So what my question is trying to do is print me these numbers, print me these numbers, but just exclude 15. Okay. So this is slightly tricky, but we will be able to achieve it in a simple way. I'll show you how to achieve it. And let's also learn how to write these kind of scripts in a step-by-step -step manner. Now, you will ask interviewer immediately the question, write a shell script to print numbers divided by 3 and 5. So we'll ask you, uh, I mean, you'll ask the interviewer from how many, for how, for how much range do you want me to print? Like, uh, do you want me to print for the numbers between 1 and 100 or 1 and 1000? Or do you want me to uh, create a custom range of numbers? So let's say interviewer said, okay, print numbers divided by 3 and 5 and not divisible by 15 from 1 to 100. Okay. So now let's take this into a shell script. So let me call sample script dot sh. Okay. So firstly, what we'll always do is we'll use a shebang and we'll say slash bin slash bash. After that, what we will do, we'll provide the information of the script. Right now, I'm not doing to just save the time. So for you, what you can do is you can put all the details of your script that you are writing here. Who is the author? What is the information? What is the script? What is it trying to do? Just provide all this information after that. Okay, I'm skipping that part. What you will try to do is you will try to break down the question as I just explained you because whenever you are writing a script in the in an interview, interviewer has to understand your mind, right? You just can't simply start writing the code, but just explain him while writing. What you will say is, okay, I understood your question and my approach would be the number has to be divisible by divisible by 3, divisible by 5 and you will explain him that it should not be divisible by 3 times of 5 that is 15. Okay, so that's what you will explain him. That means in my script, what I'll do is I'll make sure the number is divided by 15. Oh, sorry, divided by 3, divided by 5 and not divided by 15. So this will be my logic. Now, after this, what you will do is you'll start writing the script. So first of all, to write the script, you got an input from the interviewer that the number range has to be 1 to 100. But instead of writing the entire thing in a single command, what you will do is you will break down. So firstly, let's write the if command. Okay, because what we have identified is firstly, the number has to be divided by 3. This is a condition, right? What is this? This is a if condition. And again, this is another if condition, right? We have two if conditions here. And finally, we have one not if condition. And we have a for loop because the range is already 
explain so the interviewer told you the range is 1 to 100 so we can use a for loop perfect so you have this information as well so firstly let's start with the if if what you will say inside the square brackets what you want to do is you want to say that the expression okay so expression percentile let's say the number is i okay i should be divided by 2 or it should be the percentage of this number should be equals to 0 okay so that's why what you will mention is if expression of i percentile percentile sorry i percentile 2 equals to equals to 0 okay in such case you will simply say that then echo dollar of i perfect and finally you will close the if block uh, sorry my bad here you should say if i percentile percentile 3 okay because our first condition is to verify if the number is divided by 3 or not um, are you clear with this now let's extend this one okay what is our second condition divisible by 5 so what you have to do is just put a or condition and just copy the entire thing here just paste it and instead of 3 replace it with 5 okay now you have complicated the condition and you said the number has to be divisible by 3 divisible by 5 and if this condition is matching if one of these condition is matching because we are using the or condition what happens if you are using and condition both the both this condition i mean both this expression and this expression have to be true but because it can be 3 or it can be 5 divisible by 3 or divisible by 5 we'll use a or condition here perfect now we did this as well but we are left with one final condition that is the number has to be not divisible by 15. Okay. So for that reason, what you will say is ampersand ampersand. Let's copy the same condition. Okay. And here what I'll say is percentile 15 not equals to 0. Okay, so this condition has one or condition and one and condition. Okay, so the number has should I mean the number should always be not divisible by 15, but it can be divisible, uh, it can be divisible by 3 and it can be or it can be divisible by 5. Okay, so that is the condition here, right? It can either be a multiple of 3, it can either be a multiple of 5, but it should not be a multiple of 15 in both the cases. So that's why I use the and condition here. And for this one, I use the or condition. Perfect. Now you wrote the script, but who will define the range? So for that, what we need to do is above this, you have to define a range. How do you define a range using a for loop? Say for i in, okay, 1 to 100, do, this is the condition that you are doing. And finally, you will say done because your condition is done. So inside the for loop, this is the conditions that you are applying. So that's why this is your for loop statement this is the condition and finally you are closing your for loop so this will be your script now let's save this one let us say ch mode triple seven like i always say in your real time do not use triple seven use only the uh, parameter or uh, the permission that is required okay now let's me try to execute this one sample script dot sh and what will happen it will return uh, if you see here let's see from the starting 3 is available, 5 is available, 6 is available because this is uh, divisible by 3, divisible by 5. Again 3, again 3, 5, 12 is there but there is no 15. The reason is we have skipped the 15 or we have skipped the multiples of 15. Even if you see here, 90 number 90 is not available, 87 and 93 are available. right? So that's the condition that we have executed. If we look at the script one more time, we say the script or the numbers should be multiples of 3, multiples of 5, but it should not be multiple of 15. Okay. Now, because you understood how do you how do you write these scripts, what you can do is you can try by yourself for even numbers, odd numbers. You can also try for multiple of uh, 6, multiple of 7, whatever you want. You can just improve the script and you can try it at your end. Perfect. After that, write a script to print number of s in mississippi okay there is no uh, reason why i choose mississippi mississippi is slightly a complicated word and uh, most of the times people use uh, this word itself in most of the interviews also i have seen so you can change it with anything you can say singapore okay or you can choose any word you can choose your name and you can try to print one of the alphabet occurrence so the script what it is trying to say is the number of occurrence of 
S in Mississippi. So if you see here, there is two, there are two S here, and there is one more S here and one more S here. So the output should output should be four. And what if the interviewer is giving the word called Singapore? The output output should be one because there is only one S. I hope you understood the question. And now let's try to write this script as well. Vim. Let me call this as number dot sh. Okay. So the script is again very simple. Don't worry about the thing. Uh, we'll start with, as always, we'll start with shebang slash bin slash bash. Now, there are multiple ways to do this thing. Uh, like always, whenever you're doing a scripting, people do it in their own ways. People try to be very creative. But in an interview, always start with the basics. Okay. So the interviewer should not feel that you don't know the basic way of doing it or you don't know the, uh, like, you know, uh, the easy way of doing it. So always say that this is the easy way of doing it. And if you want, I can improve the efficiency or you can say that I can do it in a much better way. But if you ask me, uh, like this is a very simple command to achieve this one because you are not doing any programming, right? You are just doing a command here. Let's say you are doing a programming, then I agree that, you know, your time complexity will come into picture and all of the other things. But because you are just doing or just you are talking about a simple shell command. So that's why I say that, okay, whenever you ask me this one, I can simply uh, do the grep command and find it. But if you want, I can also, uh, you know, use some advanced approach or you use an efficient way of doing it. So the output here is very simple. Firstly, define the word. Let's call this as X and let's say X is equals to M I S S I S S I P I. I hope the spelling is right. Uh, so how you will achieve this is just say grep and in grep, there is a command called minus O or hyphen O, which will stand for only. Okay. What you are trying to grep, you are only trying to get for an alphabet called S. Even if it is Singapore or even if it is Mississippi, you're only trying to grep for an alphabet called S followed by three lesser than symbols, which I, which we'll talk now. Dollar of X, X, X is nothing but Mississippi that you defined here. And finally, you will say word count minus L. What this command is doing is it is sending all the four S to this one. And in here, what we are doing is we are trying to count the words. Okay. So word count command is nothing but let's say uh, you have a file and somebody asks you that what is the length of this file or how many number of lines are present in this file. So in such cases, you can simply use the word count command and say that, okay, uh, cat name of the file pipe word count minus L. So word count minus L is always used to return the number of lines. So here what we are doing is we are trying to redirect the output of this into a standard input and this standard input is passed to the grip command. Okay. So on a first side, you might find it complicated, but this is very, very easy. We are just using the grip command to only filter or, you know, only uh, get the output of single alphabet that is S and we are trying to send this uh, Mississippi into a standard input to this command. And finally, we are trying to get the word count. Okay. So what you need to do here is you have to practice these things. Okay. Only with practice, you can achieve these kind of things. Pause this video here. Try to understand what I have done. And finally, you will, uh, you know, master this art. So the output is four. If you change uh, the name here, let's say I'll change this to Singapore. Okay. So if I change this to Singapore, what will happen? The output should be one because there is only one S here. That's it. So this is so simple. Uh, only thing is you have to just master it every day. Okay. How will you debug the shell script? Nothing. Uh, the command is very simple. Whenever you start writing your shell script, what you need to do is you have to do SCT minus X. That is set minus X. So for any script, if you just add your first line as set minus X, then your shell script will run in debug mode or you can able to troubleshoot your shell script. You, we already saw that on our previous videos. What is cron tab in Linux? Can you provide an example usage? Okay. So basically cron tab is nothing but, uh, let's say you are a Linux administrator. Okay. So you are a Linux admin. So as a Linux admin, your job, your roles and responsibilities are every day at 6 PM. You have to send a report. Okay. What report you have to send? Let's say you have to send the report of node health how your node is performing or uh, what is the CPU usage? What is the RAM usage? Instead of every day you go and log in at 6 PM and execute a specific script. What you can do is you can 
make use of cron tab cron tab is nothing but it's like an alarm or it's like uh, you know every day you just set your cron tab to 6 pm and linux will automatically execute your script at 6 pm and give you the output whether you want to store it in s3 bucket or you want to store in a specific folder of a file you can do that using cron tab that's it so the question is very simple and the answer is also very simple do not try to complicate such kind of questions now how do you open a file in a readme mode so uh, read only mode okay so usually how do you open a file you use vim command or you use a vm command so how do you how do you use it like you say vim test dot txt or vim test dot sh or something right so instead what you can do is you can just say hyphen r so that the file will be just opened in the readme mode or read only mode sorry not readme read only what is the difference between soft and hard link okay so this is one of the most asked questions so just pay attention to what i'm saying this is not complicated but you have to understand this uh, so that you explain this in a better way to the interviewer so in linux there are two links one is soft link and one is hard link so what are these links so let's say uh, what happens when you create a file okay let's say that uh, you create a file or you just say, try to save a file okay create a file and save a file what happens in this case whenever you create a file and save a file this gets saved in the memory right where is get where is this getting saved this is getting saved in a memory or on the disk so what happens is let's say you want to reuse this file multiple times okay you want to create a copy of this file okay or you want to just uh, uh, i mean take a copy of this file and modify this file in such cases you can use hard links okay so instead of copying this command all the time using cp command or you know uh, just copying the content of the file into a different command you can just create a hard link to this specific file uh, i'm not uh, explaining you about the uh, syntax of this hard link it is nothing but you can simply use the ln command that's not uh, complicated but you need to understand the concept here so using hard link what you can do is you can create copy or you can mirror a specific file okay so what happens here is even if your original file gets deleted let's say you have a secret file and your secret file should not be deleted because you have some sensitive information what you can do is you can create a hard link of the file what happens is it will create a copy hard link will create a copy so even if the actual file is deleted from the memory your copy still exists and your hard link will keep a backup of your file but soft links are not like that the best example for soft link is let's say you have python 3 installed on your machine okay so you will always see there is a python 3 file and there is always there is also a python file what this python does is whenever you are executing dot slash python okay so your linux terminal will send this output to python 3 because the python has a soft link to python 3 that's it so what is the difference between hard link and soft link if you are deleting python 3 or if you are deleting python because both of them are referencing to the same point in the memory both the files are deleted okay so soft links are like that why you use soft links is basically for this kind of things like creating alias files or uh, instead of every time you type python 3 you can create an uh, soft link for python 3 called python and you can just say okay use python so these kind of things this is just an example so always explain your interviews in terms of examples then what is the difference between break and continue statements in a loop again this is uh, quite commonly asked questions break continue okay so the words itself will explain you the answer i don't have to explain it completely because the words are self informative what is break break is nothing but you are breaking the execution continue is nothing but okay you are continuing the execution okay so the thing is the continue comes with a special condition called skip so it is instead of continue you have to understand it as skip this and continue the next okay so it is very simple let's say you are doing a for loop okay and in the for loop we will take the same example that we discussed okay the number has to be divided by 3 the number has to be divided by 5 but if the number is divided by 3 and 5 that is if it is a multiple of 3 and 5 that is 15 you have to ignore okay so what you can do in the for loop is instead of the way that we wrote previously you can say okay has to be divided by 3 perfect has to be divided by 5 but if it is divided by 15 just ignore so instead of ignore what you will say is just continue the iteration similarly break is nothing but break you use when uh, let's say you have a complicated for loop and this for loop is executing between numbers 1 to 1 crore okay or just 
let's assume n number of zeros okay so this script takes almost 10 minutes to execute but what your interviewer says that if i am finding a number in between okay so i just want five okay so the my output is five but i want you i want you to loop through one to this number or my output is five 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 but I want you to loop through the entire loop or find until this number is found. Okay. So for that cases, what you will do is you will start looping from one to this large number. But whenever you find this number, you can simply say break. Okay. Another example is let's say you have 100 students in your class. Okay. And you have a record of this 100 students. Okay. Let's say that you stored all of these 100 students in a CSV file or an Excel sheet. Okay. So in such cases, what you will usually do is you loop through all the student names and you will print all the student names. But what your interviewer says is once you find a student name called Abhishek, okay, stop the execution. That's all I want. Okay. Whenever Abhishek is found, I don't want all the people after Abhishek. Okay. So my criteria is just find all the students. If Abhishek is in the first place, just print the output as Abhishek. If Abhishek is in the third place, just print student number one, student number two and Abhishek. If Abhishek is in 10th position, just say student one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and Abhishek. So in such cases, you can simply use the continuous state. Oh, sorry, the break statement. I hope this is clear to you. Now let's go to the next question. Okay, so this is a tricky question. People will ask you what are the disadvantages of shell scripting. I think people will ask you everywhere whenever you are giving any interview like Java interview or Python interview. So come up with your own answer. I have shared some information here. Don't go with this one. Try to explain your real time use cases whenever you are writing shell script. What are the disadvantages that you found? Like you can say one of the example as it's not statically typed. That is, uh, you know, uh, you can just declare a variable. And uh, even if you are not using it, like let's say if you are uh, not defining SCT minus U. Okay. Uh, the person has not used this set minus U command in his script. And uh, what happens is even though there are n number of undeclared variables, your shell script will not complain. Your compiler will not complain. So you can explain such kind of use cases, which are very practical in nature. What are different kinds of loops and when to use? I think you already know you have for loop, you have while loop, you have do while loop. Okay. So you can just say that okay there are different types of uh, uh, loops in uh, shell scripting and these are the different kinds of loops like any programming language uh, what is the purpose of each and every loop so i'm just leaving it to you to identify what are the different types of loops and uh, you know what is the use case for each and every loop the reason why i'm leaving this to you is because this is a very common question that you will find lot of sources in the interview and uh, we should not waste time on such kind of questions is bash dynamically or statically typed? Okay, so this is uh, one more question. So the modern day programming languages are usually uh, statically typed. Like if you take uh, Golang or these kind of things, they are statically typed. But if you look at the programming languages like Python, okay, or Shell, so these are the scripting language like Shell, they are dynamically typed. What do I mean by dynamically typed? Let's say I'm using Shell scripting. So I can simply do like this, right? X is equals to five, or I can say X is equals to string or I can do any other thing. But if you are talking about a specific programming language like Go language, before you have to define like where X is a string. Okay. And if you are providing X with a number, your uh, Go language will say that, okay, the Golang interpreter will say that, okay, you said X is a string, but you have provided integer. So I'll terminate the execution or throw you an error. So the same thing does not apply. You can do it with shell as well or Python as well, but by default, the nature is a dynamically typed. Okay. Uh, people will ask you, what are the networking uh, troubleshooting tools that you use? So one of the best tool that I'll recommend here is trace route. Okay. So trace route is a tool that you can use for your uh, uh, network debugging. For example, I'll show you. Uh, you want to see why your network is slow. Usually you will go to your internet and you will find some networking tools and you will try to understand why is it slow. But the classic way of doing uh, even these modern day tools also use uh, these kind of uh, shell commands or the Linux commands underneath. So to understand why your network is very slow today, what you can do is you can simply say trace route or trace route followed by google.com. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to reach the google.com. Let us see what are the number of hops in between your trace route and google.com. That is from your laptop, it goes to your router. From your router, it goes to your internet service provider router. From there, it will take multiple hops and finally reach google.com. So this command will explain you what are the different hops and how much each hop is taking time. 
okay so these kind of things you can identify using trace route so firstly it said okay this is your ip address this is my ip address and let's see where is it going after that it will basically uh, go to a specific act corporation that i'm using okay after that it goes to a different ip address i cannot uh, show you the entire details but after i mean uh, for the purpose of security after that it goes to your internet service provider and finally it will reach your google.com and similarly there is one more command called trace path so trace path is also efficient command because using trace path also you can identify okay trace path is not installed on my machine but using trace path also you can identify these things and trace path does not require root privileges and after that, how will sort list of names in a file? So this is not a not at all a complicated question. Sometimes I have seen interviewers asking this uh, silly questions because people uh, think a lot about these things and uh, you know they start writing a sort uh, sort kind of looping and all the other things. But as I already mentioned, you whenever you are doing or whenever you are explaining your interview, always talk about the easiest way and then you can say okay. So sort comes with the nature of uh, time complexity, uh, O of n or O of n square, whatever it is, and you can say that okay, I can improve the efficiency. But first of all, the easy way of doing is use the sort command so linux natively has a command called sort how will you manage logs of a system that generates huge log files every day this is very very important question for linux administrators and uh, also devops engineers because as a linux admin you manage a lot of applications right so each of these applications will definitely omit logs and if your application is a real time uh, front end facing application i mean real time customer facing application so it will emit 100 1000 1000 n number of logs right so how do you preserve all of these logs so if you keep storage of all these logs then what happens your disk gets on increasing and increasing so for that reason there is an efficient way on linux that is called log rotate okay so using log rotate you can basically efficiently manage your linux machines logs or application logs so about the log rotate command the command is very simple uh, you can just say log rotate and uh, you can define like for how many days you want to load, rotate these logs let's say uh, for every day once end of your 24 hours you can say that once uh, 24 hours is done just zip this log you can also define the format like you can say gzip or you can say zip or you can say tar create a compressed version of this zip file and say that okay after 30 days if the 30 days has happened just delete the log file okay so these are all the uh, commands and these are all some of the most common interview questions that i wanted to explain today if you have any questions don't hesitate uh, post the questions in your in the comment section uh, as you know i reply to each and every comment uh, that i receive on my video and finally don't forget to like subscribe my channel share this video with your friends and we'll do lot more interesting uh, concepts on the shell scripting and also on python in the coming days thank you so much i hope you like the video i'll see you in the next video bye take care